A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea because they were fishermen. He said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed Jesus. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat also with their father Zebedee, taking care of their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their net and their boat and their father and followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't imagine Zebedee was too happy with Jesus calling his two sons to follow him. They were fishing, they were doing their deeds. Jesus calls them. They probably knew of Jesus as the preacher, as the healer, and they figured, this is the one I want to I want to learn from. He was a rabbi for them. I don't think they thought he was the Messiah yet, but he was very informative and very convincing. So his reputation was out there. So he calls Andrew, Simon, and then John and his brother, and Zebedee, I'm sure, is not happy. Letting go is not easy. But letting go for a great cause. Did Zebedee know the cause? No, probably not. Did Andrew's family know why he was called? Probably not. We're in the season of Advent, and it's a season of looking forward based on something that happened centuries ago, based on something that was predicted centuries before that, all vague. They were looking for the Messiah in the book of Isaiah, and he, he formulates his theology as if a member of the house of David the family tree would grow from a stump once it's chopped down because he's given history and theology at the same time and as that stump grows it will produce fruit and the flower of that tree will be the answer to their prayers the messiah a shoot shall sprout from the stump of jesse from his roots shall blossom a bud vague. For centuries they knew how vague it was, but they knew someone or something was going to happen to be the, the blossom of the family tree. Now, let's go back to Andrew and, and his family. They didn't know what Andrew would grow up to be. He was a fisherman. That's enough. Made his career, made his money, caught fish, and was loyal to the the family business. So we never know where we're going when God calls us. And he doesn't knock on individual doors. He calls us to prayer. He calls us to our understanding of ourselves. He calls us to our relationship with one another. Andrew is a fisherman. He decides to follow his brother, Simon Peter and they follow Jesus to the point where Andrew we know historically and by custom gives his life for Jesus he's preaching he's very popular in Europe what we call Europe and when the time comes for him to show his devotion and his dedication to Jesus he's crucified but because he refused to be crucified in as a horrible a way as the crucifixion was, they did him a favor. They crucified him 
on an X-shaped cross. So he was spread out a very strange way and died a martyr. So that's why when you see a statue or picture of St. Andrew, in tradition, he's holding a big X. As he goes through life and martyrdom, his, his name stays popular because he's one of the apostles and because he's connected to Peter, but no one knows a lot about him. So, because he's one of the apostles, his body was brought over, of course, where? To Europe, to Italy, and buried in a cathedral there in Amalfi. However, the popularity in the Middle Ages of relics of the saints caused another group of people, and you think of it really out of the way, in Scotland to venerate him. So there they have a big cathedral in Scotland and his remnants of his body were buried there. However, they went through their own woke culture and the Reformation destroyed that location and of course spread his bones who knows where. As a sympathy gesture, the Bishop of Amalfi in Italy sends a portion of his bones, and I, I think today it sounds gross, but they're martyr's bones and they're the, the remnants. And recently I saw a person wearing some sort of a piece of jewelry and I said, oh, what? that's very interesting. She says, my husband. And I thought the woman's a little whacked and I said, what? She says, these are my husband's ashes. So we still do that, okay? Um, we still hold the remnants of those we love special because that's our connection with them. We have a greater connection in prayer and spirituality, but we're people, we have flesh and bones, so we'd like to hold on to those things that are still flesh and bone of those that we remember in our family. So the relics of Andrew, pieces of them, were sent to the cathedral in Scotland. And today, Andrew is like the patron of Scotland. He's unbelievably popular there. And traditionally, his feast day, the 30th of November, before the calendar was revised, began Advent. So Andrew is one of our Advent saints. Now, go back to the boat where he was being called from. Did his father know did Peter know where he would end up? They didn't even know about Scotland and the Holy Land. But that's what happens in God's life and our God's plan for us. We follow him, we do his deeds, we go about our own lives. Priest, lay people, married, single, we all do what, what we're supposed to be doing and we read the books and we know how we have a direction. But we don't know the end result. As a community of faith, we believe the end result is being prepared for Christ. Now that sounds morbid if you say, well, I live my life so when I die, I'm, I'm with Christ. Yes, it's true, but the quality of living our lives depends on where we spend eternity. Advent is a perfect reminder. What do we say right after the, the consecration? Christ has died in history. Christ is risen today. Christ will come again. So Andrew becomes like an Advent saint. He walked with Christ. He died for Christ and entered into martyrdom and glory. And with us, he's waiting Christ's return in glory. The end result. Does Zebedee's and, and Andrew's father know where he would end up? He's a fisherman. Nope. Nope. Never knew that he would be part of the church triumphant in heaven. Never knew he would be one of Christ's so important disciples, apostles. Never knew he would be one of our first bishops. No. 
and nor do you and I know where we will end up. That's why every day is important. The quality of our relationships with people, I think, very often determine the quality of our relationship with God. If you're a miserable SOB and you don't like anybody, not any of you, of course, but people in our families are sometimes like that, um, that's how that person will be in reference to God. They don't want Jesus, they don't want God, they don't want the Holy Spirit, and they don't want people. However, on the other hand, as the apostles, if you have a good relationship, one with yourself, really have to appreciate yourself. And sometimes we say love yourself, but I think if you appreciate, you get to love yourself. And not that we have to be narcissistic, but we have to appreciate who we are. Young, old, it doesn't matter. And we as Christians have a special gift that we are asked to be like Christ, Alta Christi. We're asked to be like one of the apostles. And if we want to be like Christ, then we have to be like Christ to one another in charity, in love, in forgiveness, in concern. You know the mandates of Jesus. Feed the hungry, give drinks to the thirsty, all of it. And that also filters down to our own families. With some of us, that's the, the, the biggest challenge, to appreciate our families and who they are with all of their quirks and all of their personality defects. And yet, if we do that, we can appreciate Christ. You don't know what Christ was like. We know what the Gospels portray him as. You think he was popular with Zebedee when he took his son to follow him? No, probably not. But Jesus was loyal to his apostles, and he taught his apostles loyalty and love. And eventually he gave his life for those apostles and all of us who became his apostles. So Andrew gives us a good reason to look into the season of Advent as an Advent saint and with Christ present in history and to come, we continue our Advent journey appreciating one another and appreciating Christ, Son of God.